at least a chance to earn it. I can give you one last chance to earn a life. High Table Origins, the ultra-powerful underworld organization in the John Wick universe. John Wick might have started off as a simple, action-packed revenge story, but the franchise soon introduced a far more complicated underground network comprised of dreaded assassins and crime lords. The High Table takes center stage in this brutal world of mercenaries, guns, and killings, and starting from John Wick 2, where this organization was first introduced, it has been one of the underlying mainstays in the franchise. You gave John Wick seven bullets, the High Table is giving you seven days. Even in the most recent release, John Wick 4, the High Table can be seen to have an integral role in the narrative. In this video, we will be simplifying the organization for you and tell you everything there is to know about this ultra-powerful entity. Since we will also be discussing the High Table's role in the recent release of John Wick Chapter 4, there will be a few spoilers along the way. Before we get into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. John Wick. What exactly is the High Table? The true origins explored. Even crime needs to be governed, and the High Table was set up specifically for that purpose. The true origins of the organization aren't known, but it is stated that the High Table dates back to a time before any of the world governments existed. It's as old as the Aztecs, and the organization laid down its rules and regulations over the ages. As seen in the John Wick franchise, the High Table's leadership takes the form of a council, where 12 crime lords preside. They are the the heads of the most powerful criminal organizations around the world, and they ensure that some basic guidelines are followed in the actions of the underworld. They use various tools to regulate crime, and these range from facilities like Hotel Continental, run by Winston, to the network run by the Bowery King. The High Table almost has a corporate structure with a defined hierarchy, and they seem to control every aspect of life in all parts of the world. The idea behind the High Table was probably inspired by the real-life Italian-American Mafia Commission, and it surely worked in getting the John Wick franchise the complexity and lore that it required for a long run. The High Table has marked you for death. Why would I allow you to leave? The High Table functions on the basis of a strict code of conduct, which cannot be manipulated even by the greatest crime lords or the members of the table. There is a sense of ethics, even in their organized crime, and the values that the High Table holds sacred are to be maintained even during assassinations. For instance, the Continental Hotel grounds can never be used for violence or murder, and violating this can have terrible consequences, as John Wick finds out the hard way. Everyone functioning under the High Table, from the greatest assassins and high ranking members to the lowly criminals have to abide by the rules set out, but that doesn't mean there's no dissent. As we go further in this video, we will explore the people who have openly defied the orders of the High Table and found a way out. Why? There are 12 seats at the High Table. How is the High Table introduced in the John Wick franchise? It all starts in John Wick Chapter 2. Just when you think that John Wick is going to head back into his life of retirement with his canine friend, the Camorra crime boss Santino D'Antonio plays a visit and reminds him of a blood oath taken by John in the past. This binds John Wick to do his bidding, and the task for the assassin is to kill the sister of Santino, who is about to be nominated to the High Table Council by her father. It is clear that the High Table is an esteemed organization, and in order to grab a seat in its council, even families can become enemies. A reluctant John is forced to assassinate his sister, but her bodyguard, Cassian, swears revenge. To make matters worse, Santino himself double-crosses John Wick and wants to eliminate him to avoid any problems later. We see more of the Continental Hotel and its elaborate network system, and after much struggle and some twists and turns, John finally shoots Santino dead in the hotel premises, held sacred by the high table. By the laws of the organization, this violation tags John as excommunicado with a price on his head, and the viewer realizes just how big and powerful the High Table really is. Luckily for John Wick, he has some powerful friends by his side, who are not too keen to toe the line set by the organization. Winston and the Bowery King help him escape, but the sequel later reveals that nothing goes unnoticed by the High Table. Thank you. I accept this offering. 
Who sits above the high table? The 12 members of the high table council are not the topmost rank in the organization because there is one who presides over them. This mysterious character is termed as the Elder, and we see the first glimpse of this man in John Wick Chapter 3, Parabellum. After John Wick is declared excommunicado, with a hefty price placed on his head attracting assassins from all over the world, he decides to sort out matters personally by interacting with the Elder. He reaches out to one of his old friends, who leads him to a mob boss who reveals the whereabouts of the Elder. It is revealed that the Elder resides in an unknown location in the middle of the Moroccan desert. Vehicular movement is only possible up to a point, after which one has to seek out his fate by walking through the desert following the Canis Minor constellation. The mob boss said that one doesn't find the Elder, and it's the other way around. Once the traveler is weary and knocked unconscious by the perilous walk, the Elder either finds the individual or leaves them to die. As for John Wick, he is brought in by the Elder, who asks him about the reason behind his will to live. When John responds that he wants to live in order to remember his dead wife, the Elder offers to revoke his excommunicado status and bounty if he agrees to eliminate Winston, who has previously ignored one of the fundamental rules of the High Table by allowing John Wick to walk away after committing a murder at the Continental. In order to prove his fealty, John Wick has to cut off one of his fingers with a chisel and a hammer, and he also hands over his wedding ring to the Elder. He has no choice but to accept the mission although he later turns his back on the commitment in view of his friendship with Winston. Not obeying the promises made to the Elder has its consequences, and John Wick 4, the new release, opens on this note. We see John Wick heading back to the deserts in the opening sequence, and taking down the men guarding the Elder, followed by a revenge assassination. Now, the High Table is without its mysterious leader, but you would be mistaken to think that the organization is jeopardized following the loss. Oh, he has to die. <laughs> Sorry, Jonathan. <laughs> A few key employees of the High Table. The High Table is a gigantic vehicle that functions on multiple wheels, but a few of those wheels are more important than the others. There are a few employees who have been seen across the franchise to have a key role in materializing orders and the law of the table in the real world. We have already spoken about two key elements, Winston and the Bowery King, but there have been a couple of others who have had great command over the implementation of the High Table's decisions. The Adjudicator this fierce young lady had a terrifying presence in John Wick Chapter 3, where she was brought into service in order to right the wrongs made by Winston and the Bowery King in supporting John Wick. As we have stated earlier, John had shot the recently affiliated High Table member Santino D'Antonio dead in the premises of the Continental Hotel, even though it was a safe haven or a sacred ground where any violence was forbidden. Since Winston and the Bowery King aided his escape during the action, the Adjudicator was sent by the High Table to punish their disobedience. She first arrives at the Continental Continental Hotel and orders Winston to step down from his role as the manager. Similar orders are given to the Bowery King as well, and the leader of the Rusca Roma crime family is punished for helping John escape New York. While the leader of Rusca Roma willingly accepts the punishment, where she is stabbed through her hands, Winston and the Bowery King take a stand against the Adjudicator. Meanwhile, she employs the help of a skilled assassin named Zero to get rid of John Wick. She makes him inflict seven deep cuts on the Bowery King as punishment, and they attack the Continental Hotel for Winston's defiance. We also get a look at the High Table's premium fighting force, the highly trained soldiers with armored suits that are bulletproof. However, the attack is repelled by John Wick and Winston's concierge, Karen. The Adjudicator then offers a truce, which is accepted by Winston, and as they discuss the terms of the treaty, he shoots John Wick in order to come clean with the High Table. Of course, it was all a planned move, and when the Adjudicator fails to trace John's dead body, she warns Winston of the consequences if the assassin reappears on the scene. Harbinger we expected to see more of the Adjudicator in John Wick Chapter 4, but instead we are introduced to a character of similar authority, the Harbinger. He seems to have decision-making powers, and he also oversees the rules of the High Table being properly implemented. He's seen working under the High Table member Marquis Vincent de Gramont, but in matters of the law, the Harbinger still has the last word. He's an old man, presumably with years of experience in working for the High Table. He even oversees the final duel between John Wick and the Blind Assassin. While the Adjudicator seemed just and fair, the Harbinger is not exactly ethical. He is seen advising Vincent to adopt unfair means, and even tells him that dueling with John Wick is not in his best interests. That said, his partiality doesn't show in his final verdict, where he fairly upholds his end of the bargain. The table will honor its word. John Wick versus the High Table in John Wick 4, the bloody final showdown. 
The High Table is omnipresent through the events of the movie, and their superiority in powers can be observed even as there are a few powerful individuals up in rebellion. The movie starts off with the Bowery King helping John Wick track down and assassinate the Elder, in a clear act of defiance. Of course, such action has some tough consequences, and the High Table soon cracks down on all the forces that helped John Wick. Marquis Vincent de Grammont, a high-ranking member of the High Table, summons Continental Hotel Manager Winston and his concierge Caron to answer for their actions. The Continental Hotel is demolished in front of their eyes, and Winston is stripped of his charges, while Caron is shot dead as punishment. In order to track down John Wick and eliminate him for his crimes against the High Table, Vincent summons the help of a deadly blind assassin named Kane. John Wick heads to Tokyo to the Osaka Continental, run by his old friend Koji, but the long arms of the High Table reach there as well. Their mercenaries, with their special bulletproof suits and masks, attack the hotel alongside Kane, and John barely manages to escape after putting up a valiant fight. Koji falls in this battle, and his loyal men are destroyed by the High Table soldiers. However, the opposing forces of the High Table, such as Winston and the Bowery King, continue to conspire against the organization. Winston advises John Wick about a loophole in the High Table rulebook that can allow him to be free of his obligation to the organization. He can challenge Vincent de Grammont to a duel, and a win will guarantee his freedom, according to the old ways of the High Table. However, in order for the challenge to be legitimate, John must be a member of another affiliated crime family. Family. This inspires the modern-day version of Baba Yaga to head to Germany to cement his ties with the Ruska Roma. Katya, the current leader of the organization, offers him the opportunity after he successfully kills the man who assassinated his father. He gets the painful crest marking on his arm and becomes an official member of the syndicate, making his challenge legitimate. While you saw the adjudicator in John Wick 3, an old man referred to as the Harbinger can be noticed overseeing the proceedings in this movie. He spells out the rules of the duel and states the date and time for the final showdown. Vincent names Kane to fight in his stead because it is a part of the rules, and as a part of the deal, Winston claims to be reinstated as the manager of the Continental should John win. The High Table is not entirely unjust, but the same cannot be said for all of its members. Vincent de Grammont, for example, does not shy away from adapting unfair means to get rid of John Wick before the duel. However, his attempts fail, and so do the hundreds of assassins who are lured by an unusually large bounty on John Wick's life. The fateful duel seemingly kills John Wick eventually, but not before he blows out Vincent's brains with his clean final shot. We see the just side of the high table as the Harbinger relieves John Wick of his obligations and declares him to be free of the organization's enmity. Winston is once again made the manager of the Continental, and the Bowery King is allowed to have a free run, at least for now. Now. By no means is the high table destroyed or affected, because as said multiple times in the movie, they simply replace one fallen official with another. The organization is simply too big and powerful to be eliminated altogether, but they can be seen to acknowledge great forces that do not directly obey them, such as the Bowery King. Asleep. You working again? Does the High Table control governments and government organizations, or is it just a dystopian world? Have you ever wondered about the lack of police resistance faced by the assassins and other members of the High Table? Well, that makes us think about the possibilities of the sheer power that the High Table wields. Right from the very first John Wick movie, it was shown that the cops turned a blind eye to his acts of violence. In John Wick 2, when John's house was burned down by an explosion, the cops seemed to know it all and yet suggested a gas leak just to provide the ideal excuse for the assassin to get away. There have been a few other similar instances, and in general, it can be observed that police interference in the actions of the High Table members is completely absent. They engage in open gunfights and violent duels in public places, and no one ever dares to stop them. Even the common people turn a blind eye to all such violence and pretend like nothing is happening, which establishes some form of normalcy around the organization. In John Wick 4, the action takes place all over the world, from Tokyo to Paris to Germany, and we didn't see any police interference once. A very simple explanation could be that the high table exercises some form of control over the government and all government agencies across the world. Their authority is never questioned by law enforcement agencies because they are dependent on the high table for stability in the city in general. It could also be possible that the entire John Wick universe is premised in a different dystopian world, where the high table is the government. Body. There is no other government as such, 
and any opposition to the high table is seen as a daring rebellion and crushed mercilessly by the organization. The cops and other so-called government officials and emergency services are all run by the high table in this dystopian world, which is almost like a dictatorship, only instead of one person, there's an entire organization. That would also explain the negligence of the common people, even when someone is being stabbed or shot right in front of them. Whatever be the case, one thing is for certain. A gallant, deadly protagonist like John Wick needed the right kind of enemy to challenge him, and it required an entire organization with thousands of assassins and other criminals to be the ideal opponent. Do let us know in the comments below about your thoughts on this sinister organization, and don't forget to tell us how you like John Wick 4 and the role of the high table in the movie. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. This has been Corey Whelan for Marvelous Videos. Have a good one, be safe out there, and thanks for watching. John Wick, excommunicado.